by utilizing the Chester County, South Carolina, Commodity Flow Study to determine the types and quantities of hazardous materials transported through its jurisdiction, the county can promote a clearer understanding of the materials transported, aiding future planning and response efforts regarding hazardous materials. The hazardous materials in the county are sorted by the most to the least significant public hazard risk. The data also represents the guidelines for spill or fire incident response, including maximum spill and fire protective distances, protective actions, and necessary response gear, such as personal protective and emergency response equipment. Below sulfur dioxide, the second highest ranked hazardous chemical in the county is chlorine. The 2021 Hazardous Materials Emergency Preparedness Transportation Exercise focused on chlorine to test our emergency operations plan and train and prepare emergency response personnel. On Friday, May 14, 2021, Chester County Emergency Management held a hazardous materials transportation exercise involving a simulated chlorine release from the Chester Wastewater Recovery Rocky Creek Treatment Facility in Chester, South Carolina. The exercise was funded by the U.S. Department of Transportation and managed by the Chester County Local Emergency Planning Committee, or LEPC. The multi-agency exercise included Chester City Fire Department, Chester County Hazmat, Chester County 911, Chester County Emergency Management Agency, Chester County Emergency Medical Services, Lancaster Fire Department, the Local Emergency Planning Committee, South Carolina Emergency Management Division, and Chester Wastewater Recovery. The exercise had several objectives. First, to train responders on recognizing and identifying the hazardous material involved in the incident. Second, to conduct atmospheric monitoring. Third, to apply a B, emergency response kit to a one-ton cylinder. And fourth, the setup and operation of both emergency and three-stage technical decontamination. The exercise scenario began with a call to Chester County 911 from Boral Stone, an engineered stone manufacturer, situated 0.4 miles from the Chester Wastewater Recovery Facility. The Boral Stone employee reported hearing a fire alarm. 911 alerts the Chester City Fire Department, Station 1, and Station 10, to respond to a fire alarm at 663 Ecology Lane. Within six minutes, Chester City Fire arrives on the scene and notices what appears to be a gas cloud emitting from the office building at the wastewater treatment facility. Next to the structure emitting smoke, responders notice a CWR truck with its door open. Greeted by a CWR employee, first responders receive information that the gas cloud from the one-ton cylinder is chlorine and obtain a material safety data sheet. The employee also notifies them that there is one unaccounted for, CWR employee. The responders back their vehicles to a safe distance. The officer in charge notifies 911 to dispatch the Chester County Hazmat Team, Emergency Management, and set off a city fire all call for hazardous materials response. 911 utilizes the Emergency Response Guidebook to provide health hazard information and protective action distances. All units on the scene, vapors may be toxic, uh, fatal if inhaled or absorbed through the skin, where positive pressure self contain breathing apparatus, isolate for an initial half mile in all directions. Reverse 911, have everybody in a half mile radius uh, shelter in place. Everyone 914. A reverse 911 public alert to shelter in place goes out to an area within a half mile radius of the facility. 911 also notifies train companies to suspend all rail traffic through the area. The incident commander utilizes the emergency response guidebook and material safety data sheet to begin response planning. Lancaster and Rock Hill hazmat teams are radioed to respond. Meanwhile, Emergency Medical Services and Chester County Hazmat arrive on the scene. Both emergency and three-stage technical decontamination begin setup. The first entry team preps for entry with a pre-entry vitals check and donning level A suits. The first team goes on air and makes entry utilizing 
the MSA Altair 5X gas detector. They establish the hot zone at the first alarm, which is then marked using an orange safety cone. A second MSA Altair 5X gas detector is placed in the warm zone, for continuous atmospheric monitoring. SCBA is also warned by DECON personnel, to provide adequate protection, from possible toxic exposure in the warm zone. Approaching the building housing the chlorine cylinder, the entry team notices a CWR employee, who is unconscious on the exterior stairs of the structure. They make contact, and remove the patient to emergency decontamination. The second entry team is prepped, and ready for entry when the first team returns with the patient. The patient goes through emergency decontamination, and is taken to emergency medical services for transport to the hospital. The first entry team goes through the three-stage technical decon, and then to EMS for post-entry vitals check, and rehab. The second entry team has donned level A suits, and self-contained breathing apparatus. Their entry will focus on mitigating the leak. The second team gains entry to the platform housing the chlorine cylinder. The cylinder is leaking from the valve, which requires the team to remove the chlorine manifold, before applying the B emergency response kit to the leaking valve. The team secures the bar assembly to the 1 ton cylinder, followed by the 12A hood device and 412 BMV gasket. Once connected and secured, the leak is mitigated, and entry team 2 heads for decon and rehab. After the exercise, a hot wash is conducted, to review what went well, and what could have gone better. A week following the exercise, an after-action meeting formalizes the critical learning points, and determines necessary action items. Hazardous materials, emergency preparedness, transportation exercises, are made successful, by participating LEPC members. Facility LEPC stakeholder participation is key to annual exercises, allowing responders and facilities to test emergency response procedures. Involvement in exercises also provides facilities with the Environmental Protection Agency's Risk Management Plan requirement to communicate and coordinate with the local emergency planning committee and involve outside agencies on site during emergency response for hazardous substances above the threshold quantities established by the EPA. Contact Chester County Emergency Management for information on participation in future hazardous materials transportation exercises and LEPC membership and meetings. This video was brought to you by the Chester County, South Carolina Emergency Management Agency.